Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, in my last couple of videos, uh, I've been receiving quite a few emails, texts, and also uh, comments uh, in those videos about the, uh, the new tripod head that I've been using. Now, I didn't really want to talk about it too much because I haven't really used it that much. Uh, but I thought, well, rather than just keep answering individual emails and such, I'll just do a quick video about the head and it's, you know, where it's from and, and so on and so forth. Now, before I do that, I just wanted to make a couple of really quick announcements. Uh, my book, Quiet Light, uh, we're now doing a second printing. Uh, the first printing sold extremely well, uh, better than uh, I had kind of anticipated. The first edition only made 500 copies. I was quite conservative with the numbers because you never know how many you're, you're gonna actually sell. Well, of course they sold out really quickly. <laughs> so, so Kozu Books and I are printing up uh, another copy. And uh, if you would like to uh, pre-order a copy, I'll leave a link down below. Uh, we're hoping that the books will be out uh, by August of this year. Now, of course, with everything that's going on, uh, things are a little bit up in the air of, of times, but that's what we're shooting for. So if you're interested in my book, uh, please go ahead, check out uh, the link and you can pre-order. Uh, another announcement, uh, Nigel Danson. Many of you know Nigel's uh, YouTube channel. Nigel has put together a landscape photography uh, photo contest with some great prizes and any money uh, raised for that contest will be going towards a good cause. Uh, I'm one of the judges along with several other people. So if you're interested in entering a photo contest with great prizes, then I'll also leave a link down below. Right, let's talk about the, uh, the geared head that I'm using. Now, as many of you probably know, most tripod heads tend to be ball heads. Uh, there's just a huge array of ball heads out there, uh, ranging from quality in, and price. You know, you can pick up a ball head for $30, $40, all the way up to several hundred dollars. The more expensive ball heads tend to be better. And when I say expensive ball heads, I'm talking about really right stuff, or Arca Swiss, uh, also FLM, which is the ball head that I had on this before this head. Uh, ball heads are excellent for all around photography. And I don't have a problem with them. I've been using them for 20 odd years. However, when I first started photography, I was using a lot of four by fives and I used what's known as a geared head where you have each individual movement on that head is operated by a, a, a gear. And they are extremely specialized and they're really made for studio photography, architectural photography. Uh, they work really well if you do a lot of macro photography. And in my case, I, I like using them for landscape photography. Now, granted, I haven't used one for quite some time, uh, but I decided, well, you know what? I, I, the ball head that I had uh, from FLM, it was extremely well made but it was just, there was just too much going on with it, uh, too many adjustment knobs that I, I wasn't that keen on. So I decided to go for a geared head. Now, uh, for those of you that follow Simon Baxter and Ben Horn, uh, both YouTubers, you'll know that they use uh, uh, a geared head called the Cube. And I think it's, I th it's either made by Arca Swiss or Sinar, I can't remember. Uh, I think it's called the C1 Cube Head. It's an absolutely fantastic uh, geared head. The, the problem with it though, is that uh, it's extremely expensive. If I purchase one in Canada, I think it'd end up costing me over $2,000, which I just cannot justify for uh, a tripod head. It's not so much that, uh, you know, I don't want to spend the money on the, on the head because I'm, I'm sure that the quality is exceptional. The problem that I have is that I'm, I'm not particularly careful with my gear and I could see that such a, a precision made uh, object would get damaged very easily. I tend to throw my tripods around. I'm, I'm not careful with my gear at all. So I wanted something that was a little bit cheaper and if it does get broken, then it's not gonna break the bank to either fix it or, or replace it. 
So I did a search for geared heads and there aren't that many companies that make them because they are very specialized. Uh, ben Rowe makes one, uh, Manfrotto, uh, Cambo, uh, Arca Swiss, uh, Sinar, I think Linhoff makes them as well. But they all tend to be uh, quite expensive, except for maybe the Benro and the, the Manfrotto heads. The problem with the Manfrotto is I just don't like the quick release plate. Uh, I, it's just too big and, and awkward. I'd rather sp stick with the Arca Swiss type plates. Now this head here, um, definitely not for everybody. If you into sports, wildlife, then don't buy a geared head because it'll just frustrate you to hell. Um, and also, if you do a lot of rushing around that type of photography, this is probably not going to work for you. It's very specialized. I tend to be very slow and methodical with my compositions, so a head like this works perfect for me. The reason why I like a geared head over a ball head is just a little bit more precise. You can do individual movements without interrupting, say, uh, a left and right axes to up and down axes. They're individual, so they don't affect one another. With the ball head, especially the cheaper ball heads, they tend to creep a little bit. So you set up your composition, then it creeps, and, and your, your composition's off, so then you've got to readjust it. It's just a bit of a pain. So I thought I'd give this a go. So I'll just go over some of the features really quickly. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to really review it because I haven't had it long enough. And how can I give a good review if I haven't used it that much? All right, so this head has more or less uh, four axes, I guess you'd call them. The first one is the, the base of the tripod head. It has this little knob here that locks off. Now you'll notice that the plate is quite wide on this uh, tripod and it does clip it slightly. But the nice thing is it's on a spring, so if it does clip anything, you can just pull it out and turn it to wherever, wherever you want, and then just lock it off. The next knob is this one here, which I guess controls the tilting action of the camera. And again, the movements are very slow and precise. Now on the first version, there was a button, I think, where you could go from one angle to another really quickly, but they've got rid of that. So what you have to do is turn the knob slowly. It might be a bit of a pain for some people. Now there is a ratchet on here. And the idea is that you can just turn this much quicker. The problem is, and then you can probably see it already, is that at certain points this gets kind of clips. So you have to pull it out a little bit. So it's not ideal. Uh, but if you want to get from one point to another really quickly, then it works quite well and of course then we have this knob here which uh, adjusts the left to right action and again it's on a has a ratchet so if you want to get to one point to another really quickly you just use that and as soon as you want to do more precise movements then you can just turn the knob and then Lastly, and the one that I like the most, is that the plate rotates independently to the rest of the head. Very much like the three-legged thing, uh, ball head that I had. It had the same kind of uh, plate on it. So the nice thing is, if, if your tripod's at a weird angle, you can adjust it until uh, everything's level in the bubble on the top there. And then just put your tripod on, uh, your camera on, and lock that off. And if you want to do, um, say, panos, then that's a great feature for, for pano photography. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, it seems really well made. The problem is, is that, like I said, I haven't used it that much. So I really can't give you a full review of it. There are certain things I've noticed already that uh, might be a bit of a problem in the future. Uh, the first one being that when I lock this off, I notice that there's some slight movement in the whole head. It moves a little bit, which is not great. And the same thing with this knob here. As soon as I lock it off, you'll notice, see that? There's a very slight movement in the top there. You know, and this is supposed to be a precision type uh, head. So you don't want any movement. So I'll have to give it a go. I, like I said, I haven't used it very much. so. Um, I can't, you know, I can't endorse it yet. 
Um, but as far as the, the regular uh, adjustments, I, I really like this type of photography. It's more contemplative, it's, it slows you down, and I quite like that. So there you have it, the, uh, the Sunway Photo GH Pro 2 head. Uh, like I said, if you're into uh, precise movements with, say, architectural or uh, studio work, or even landscape work, then this might be a good alternative for you. If you're a generalist and like wildlife, nature, running around and, and snapping shots with a tripod, this is probably not going to work for you. I hope this was helpful. Uh, you know, as time goes on, I'll know more about this head and I can give you more feedback on whether it's, you know, uh, withstanding the abuse of <laughs> the type of photography I do. Uh, just uh, you know, ask now and then in the comments uh, whenever you see me using it and I'll try to answer the best I can. All right, I hope you got something out of this uh, video. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up and I will, uh, I'll catch you next week. All right, bye for now.